Hi, and welcome to the next in my series of Affinity Publisher Tool by Tool. This is an expanded series from the series of shorts that I did last year, and we're going to be doing this in version two of Affinity Publisher. Today, we are down to the text tool on the left toolbar. And so we have the frame text tool here, and I'm gonna talk about this uh, in conjunction with the artistic text tool because I'd like to demonstrate the difference between the two. So I'm going to use the frame text tool and I can just hold my left mouse button and drag out a text box. So if you use Microsoft Word, which most of us do or have, then you know that you can insert a text box anywhere in your document. So this is the same sort of principle. It's hard to see because there's this bounding box, but there is a blinking cursor over here and we can start, oh, we can try to start typing. And we have our text. Now, if I want to make this text bigger, I can change the font size. So I'm gonna select it. And then when I have this text tool, I have a bunch of options up here. So let's take a look at some of the most common of these options. So first of all, we can change the font itself. So it defaulted to Arial. What if we wanted to do, let's say, let's do something different. Let's do American Typewriter. And so now it switched it into this typewriter-like font. And any font that has other options, this next section here will give the different options. Now, not every font has every option. In fact, some of them don't even have bold or italics. So this section is font specific, but this particular one that I've chosen has a condensed light, a light, regular, just plain old condensed, semi-bold, bold, and condensed bold. So lots of different options. Let's just stick with regular. The next one is font size. So I can click on this drop down arrow and I can change the size. I get a preview just by hovering. I'm not clicking on anything at the moment. I am just hovering and moving my mouse up and down until I decide which one I want. Let's start with 24. And then if you do have other options like we saw in here, then you will have some of these available too. So you can see we've got bold, so we can bold by just clicking that on and off, very much like Microsoft Word. We can underline. But this one has the italics grayed out, so there's no option to make this font into italicized text. So these three buttons are very similar to most word processing software, so they should be pretty familiar. The next one is our color. And when you hover over all of these, it'll tell you what it is. So I'm going to click on color, and we can change it to be, let's say, a nice dark red. And we've changed that. I'm going to skip over these styles because they, I'm going to go over those in a separate video when we start going through this whole top area. So let's just skip over the styles for now. Other common things that you would see in word processing software is the ability to center it or justify it to the left or right. So by default, it's going to be left aligned. We can click on the next one and center the text within our text box and we can right align it and then this last one justified left is actually a type of centered which if you can kind of look at the icon it's often seen in novels so that both right and left is just and let's just see what happened to that last word justified we get this warning over here this red dot popped up and a little eyeball icon with a line through it telling me that I have overset text so I can expand this text box and there was my last word so you get a two for one there. So this is this last justified left, but it's actually kind of centered and justified both right and left. 
and you can see that it's trying to fit the words in as best as possible and have the left side and the right side make a nice even line. So the problem with that, of course, is sometimes you end up with bigger spaces in between your words than you would like. So the next little icon here allows us to align our text to the top of the box. So let's just back up here a second. These ones, when we were justifying right and left and centered, we were kind of talking about its relationship to these left and right edges of our text box. So when we go to this one here, let's just pick centered, we can choose the relationship of the text to the edges of the text box for the vertical direction, so the bottom and the top of the text box. So we can center it in the middle of the box, we can align it to the bottom of the box, and we can justify it so that it just spaces it out evenly. So if I expand my text box, it's going to change it to have bigger spaces in between. Okay, so one of the next things we can do is we can hit this bullet list and we can add a bullet point there. And now if I make this a little bigger, let's get rid of the vertical justification option we had chosen. And I can add my second point. And let's justify this to the left so that we can see our bullet points. Okay, so that's a bullet point. I can also select this and make that into a numbered list with the next one over. And finally, I can change the number of columns that I have. So I can just click this and I can change different columns. It's automatically putting a space in between here, so a gutter, and that is controlled by this next option here. So by clicking it down to zero, I now have no space in between my columns other than the space that's created by having numbering on. So let's turn the numbering off. And now you can see that I don't have any space in between my columns. And I can add some gutter and that will create more space. So let's make that 0.2 inches. All right, so I'm gonna go back to one for the purposes of this demonstration. Let's go back to just one. All right, so that is the frame text tool and the main controls that you have for it. So now let's go to the artistic text tool, which is this A symbol here on the left toolbar. And I'm going to click and drag. Now, instead of a full text box, I really get this narrow text box with a blinking cursor. And you can see my blinking cursor is much bigger. So if I have a frame text, you can see I just have a cursor as big as my font. If I take the artistic text tool, whatever size that I drag out is going to be how big my initial text is going to be. Now I can still take this, let's take this one. I can still take this and use the font to adjust this. But whereas with this frame text, changing the text box didn't change the size of the font, with the artistic text tool, I can just grab any of these handles and I can change the size of my font just by dragging. I can squish things up by using the side ones or the top and bottom ones. So you can get some more interesting text effects with the artistic text tool in terms of squishing things up, constraining things, maybe look at making things look really squat like this. And it can be just handy for adjusting the font size visually. So what I would recommend is that you use the text tool, the frame text tool for content. So if you are laying out a magazine, you would use this for your article. If you're doing an ebook, same thing. If you are doing something like a social media pin where there's only maybe one sentence or a few words, 
I would use the artistic text tool because you'll be able to kind of scale and position it much more easily. Same thing if you're designing for, let's say, a t-shirt or something like that, then you would want to use the artistic text tool. For short pieces of text that are more decorative in nature, use the artistic text tool. And for content types of text, so blocks of text, I would use the frame text tool. All right, so I'm going to get rid of my artistic text tool and this box here. And I just want to show you one other thing with the frame text tool. So I'm going to delete this and instead I'm going to go to text and insert filler text. And that's just going to give us some filler text, some lorem ipsum kind of gibberish Latinish kind of text to fill our box. All right, so now I'm going to draw out another text box. And if I want to have my text flow to this next text box, so whatever doesn't fit in this box continues on this one, this little arrow that we saw turn red before, when I hover over it, there's like a little barbell, which is meant to represent a link. And so I'm going to click on that. And then when I hover over my next text box, you'll see it all turn blue. And I'm going to click on that. And what that did is it linked it together. So when I click on the little arrow over here, you can see there's now a line with a little arrow in this direction saying that this is linked together. And so let's add maybe one more text box down here. And we can click on this arrow. And when it turns blue, just click on the text box and it will continue to add our text into this next text box. So this is useful when you've got a multi-page text document and you just want the text to automatically flow. So let's, let's just add a page here. And don't worry about the adding pages part. Let's go up here. Let's draw another text box here. And now we can click on this one, drag it over here, click here, and now our text flows. All right, so that is text basics. There are more things that you can do to decorate text. We will come back to that when we get to the section on the windows and the effects. So let's leave it at this for the frame text tool and the artistic text tool and some of the options that you have with text. Thanks for watching.